Hey, this is AC over at AC's 8-Bit Zone. I went on eBay and I bought the worst condition Color Computer 2 that I could find. This gem was $17, $18. It was sold as uh, broken for parts or repair. So I thought this would be a perfect challenge and I'm, I was hoping that it would have all kinds of things wrong with it. Uh, definitely came in dirty, uh, but this is what it looks like now. And believe me, it took a lot of work to get it to this condition. I threw every cleaning trick that I know at this plastic case and uh, the internals of this. And let's go take a step back and see what condition it was in when I first received it. Well, I didn't expect much when I paid $17 on eBay. I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but there is so much ground in dirt in the grain of this plastic. Here's a black scuff mark. There's a lot more scuff marks on the bottom side that you'll see here in a minute. There's a broken piece of the case. It's broken here on the front. It's also broken over on the side. Yeah, right here. This is a, a break in the plastic. That's going to be easily glued, I'm sure. Uh, the back's in good shape. It's just really dirty. I mean, this dirt is ground in. I'm going to share with you all of the cleaning products that I used and uh, a couple of just simple cleaning tools that you probably have around the house. Probably the worst thing is, on the exterior anyway, is uh, the, the keyboard. Some of the keys are actually sticking. Okay, so first thing I wanted to do is just assess whether it works. So I'm plugging it in, turning it on, and amazingly, this machine powers up no issues. I mean, for a machine that was sold broken for parts or repair, this really goes to show you how robust these Tandy machines were and how, how well built they were and what good manufacturing they must have had back in that day. So first order of business, I'm gonna open this up, see how much dirt we have on the inside. Uh, let's see how much RAM we have and uh, look, take a look at the chips and mainly get at this keyboard and, and start the process of cleaning everything up. Yeah, here's that look at the broken piece from the inside. This is going to be easily glued. I don't think it's going to look perfect. And by the way, if you have any good tips for better ways to mend the plastic than what I'm going to do here, please let me know. There's probably some neat trick that you can do with melting the plastic or I don't know, but uh, definitely let me know in the comments if, if you have a, a method. So first I'm going to pull the keyboard out, there's a nasty lint ball in here. The board itself looks great. Uh, we don't have the extended color basic ROM, it only has the color basic. Uh, this part is socketed, that's the SAM. So there's one socket, one empty socket for an extra ROM, the SAM is socketed, and, uh, and the RAM, not much else. By the way, it's a 16K byte machine. And uh, let's take a look at this keyboard. The shift key and the down arrow are completely stuck. When I press them down, they don't release. They're mushy and sticky. It's time to open this up and get in there just and see what it is that's gumming up the keys. Okay, so really quick, let's zip through this. Okay, with the backing plate off, there's the membrane. It really, on the inside, this keyboard looks great. You usually don't find much uh, particulate dirt in here. Uh, notice this one uh, green spring. This is special for the space bar. Uh, the rest of the springs have a little bit less force and uh, they're silver in color. So the stickiness isn't necessarily here in the back. It's probably between the key and the front of this uh, black plastic plate. So I'm just going to take everything apart, get this down to nothing except plastic pieces. 
I'll remove all the metal and then I'm going to take all the plastic and I just put it in the bathtub with some dish soap and some warm water. I'll let it soak usually for about 15 minutes and then I use a toothbrush and I scrub every surface of each key and uh, I just soak these white nylon uh, push pieces. Uh, they don't usually need much cleaning uh, but the keys they'll get scrubbed and dish soap is really all I've ever needed for the keys. Okay real fast through this Okay, I'm going to remove the main board. I want to be able to clean the plastic with, without any uh, components in the way. Pull the transformer connector out. Okay, the back of the board looks very clean. I'm not even going to remove this, uh, this EMI shield from the back. I'm just going to take a paintbrush and dust the circuit board clean. I'm wearing an ESD strap because it's winter and with this really dry air the static discharge is really bad right now. So I don't want to zap anything. So I'll just throw all the dust into the case, take the case up with the keys and the top of the, of the computer and wash all the plastic at the same time. Okay with the transformer out Okay, the keys and the bottom of the case are soaking. I've already cleaned this top half and I'm getting ready to glue it while the other pieces are cleaning. I threw every cleaning trick that I know with this. I used a toothbrush and dish detergent. I used Windex. I used Green Clean. I even tried Goo Gone. Uh, but what did the most good, I believe, was the dish soap and, and the toothbrush and just scrubbing action. On all of the black scuff marks, I used a magic eraser, and uh, I think the top case looks pretty good now. Okay, so while that glue sets up, I went back and I scrubbed all of the key caps. I use a toothbrush, dish soap, and warm water. I'll put a little bit of uh, silicone grease on the, this is a metal hinge piece for the space bar. Pop it back in place. And make sure you get the metal rod under the two plastic holding tabs in the black plastic. I didn't show that step, but it, it's easy to miss that. And the, the keyboard and the uh, space key won't press correctly if the, if the black metal rod isn't under those two little holding pieces. And I just scrub each of the five faces of the key. And I soak the white nylon spacers. And I scrub the, the black keyboard piece with, uh, with toothbrush as well. And I think everything came out looking quite good. Okay, let's get all these keys back in place. Okay, and one really careful look at the four arrow keys to make sure I get those in the correct locations. Now I'm just going to use a, a surface to flip the keys over. Now I'll, place, now I'll place a board over the keys so I can flip it all over. They'll stay in place and they have a little bit of wiggle room. And I'll press the nylon backing pieces into place. Okay, with that, springs come next. Make sure you put the green one in the space bar location. Put the circuit in place and put the metal cover back on. There are two little plastic guide pieces to make sure everything is aligned perfectly. And I just hold down pressure on one end to compress the springs. 
That way the pressure is not on the screw and the plastic while I'm pressing the, the screws back in place. Okay, keyboard's back together. Time for reassembly. I'll place the two black rubber washers on for the keyboard. There's the main board. Now for the transformer. It's just a little bit fiddly to work the wiring back into the into the twists and turns here. Two screws hold the transformer in place. There are the two cartridge port hold downs with two screws. And there's two more screws in the front of the main board. Give everything a final tightening. All right, looks good. Oops, I dropped a washer there. Okay, putting the keyboard back in place. And with the shiny cover back on, it's looking much better. My glue's holding so far. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of UV protectant. So with a microfiber cloth, I apply some 303 protectant. This is a so-called aerospace protectant for ultimate UV protection. Keeps vinyl, rubber, and plastic looking newer, longer. Helps prevent fading and cracking, repels dust, lint, and staining, and restores lost color and luster. Well, I think it mostly does that. It does make it look better. Okay, I'm really happy with that. So I'll take it back to the TV monitor and make sure that I didn't break anything. Okay, it comes right back up. Like I mentioned before, this is Color Basic. This one does not have the extended Color Basic ROM and it's a 16K machine. The keys are much better now. There's no sticking keys. That shift key and the down arrow are working perfectly now. And uh, everything's great with this machine. So great value for $18. Uh, unfortunately, there was not a lot to fix. That's good and bad, right? It's, it's good for making, uh, making really interesting videos when there are problems in the hardware, but uh, this was a fun one to restore and I'm happy with it now and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.